Hey, welcome back to this Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us once again. Today, first of a couple of episodes on drug administration. Now, some of you might be thinking it's a bit of a no-brainer subject. Uh, it's pretty easy just to administer someone a drug, but the reality is that it's something we need to commit to. We need to commit to having some really good practices around drug administration. And the reason for that is that if you make a drug error, it can threaten your reputation, your career, and most of all, it can cause a big adverse clinical outcome for the patient. And some of you might be thinking, well, you know, drug errors, no big deal. You might administer someone not quite enough for drug or a little bit too much for drug. That's not a biggie. But the reality is that with these patients, especially patients who are really sick, where we're working a bit harder, one of the most common drug errors is the wrong drug actually gets administered. And that, of course, can cause a very big adverse clinical outcome. And the way to prevent those, those adverse clinical outcomes, the drug errors, is by committing to really good practices, checking out drugs from the start, from the infancy of our pre-hospital paramedic careers. So I just want to talk about a couple of things around that first of all. Of course, we all know our four rights, checks, right drug, right route, right dose, right patient. We know them, but I want to expand on a couple in particular. First one is right patient. Now, for me, the right patient kind of thing has come out of the hospital setting where there are nurses or hospital staff walking around and they're caring for multiple patients during each shift. And for us, usually, we are only dealing with one patient. We have one patient in the back of our ambulance, all that we're caring for. So, uh, so that is a little bit defunct in our environment. But every now and again, you might get a big case that's a multi-casualty incident where you're actually caring for multiple patients. So the right patient check absolutely applies in the pre-hospital environment. So we need to keep doing that even though usually we only have one patient. Now the other aspect of the right patient check for me is um, I like to think about the patient's clinical needs every time before I administer a drug. And so right patient for me is kind of morphed into is it still right or is it still appropriate for me to give this patient another dose of the drug? And the time for me to check that it's not at the start of our care when we administer the first dose of the drug, but it is every time we have the drug in our hands. doesn't matter if it's in a syringe or what presentation it takes, but every time I have that drug in my hands, I straight away go through my drug checks and right patient springs to mind. Now, right patient for me, what I do is it's not a rote learning type of thing. It's more a set of questions I ask the patient and I ask myself about the patient's clinical state. And, uh, and the way I practice this is that I'll draw up every drug or go through an entire drug kit and hold a vial of the drug and actually look at the drug and go through my mental checklist, my set of questions, my script that I ask myself and the patient before I administer the drug. And once again, when you have that drug in your hand, that is a time to do your drug checks, it includes the right patient check. So for example, uh, those questions really reflect you having a working knowledge of the pharmacology of the drug. I'll give you an example. For GTN, for example, first time we administered, of course, we go through our contraindications. But then every time I administer GTN, I always look at the bottle, hold the bottle in my hand, feel it in my hand. Then I look at the patient and I think, does this patient still have pain? Are they still symptomatic? Is there any reason why I can't take away some of this patient's afterload and preload? Uh, do the benefits of administering this drug still outweigh the risks of, uh, of the drug administration? So that's really important. It, it shows you've got a functional understanding of uh, how the drug works. And um, so it's something you'll have to work on. Everybody's got their own scripts and something that, yes, you can work on personally, but also something that you'll learn when you go out on road with your mentors. You'll start sort of listening to how they talk to patients and the questions they ask, questions they ask themselves as well. Uh, and you can have a discussion with them about that. So that's really important. So that's right patient. The second one I uh, want to expand a little bit more is right drug. Now, of course, we're all really, really familiar with our drug checks, but a lot of people don't do drug checks, especially when we're checking vials and expiry dates appropriately. The appropriate way to do a drug check is to have a vial of the drug in your hand before drawing it up, to read the actual drug, in this case, it's sodium chloride, it expires in January 17, uh, to read the actual label of the drug, but don't read it out loud, read it to yourself first of all. So you know what's in that, then you hand the vial to one of your colleagues and say, can you read that out loud for me, please? And that way 
you've got two people reading it. If you just read it out loud, they're just going to they're just going to mimic you and say exactly the same as what you've done. Especially when you're under the pump and you've got a lot of different things to do for the patient. So it's really important you actually do the drug check the way it's meant to be done. And that is once again, read the vial to yourself, the drug, the amount of drug, and also the expiry date, hand it to a colleague, get them to read it out loud. That way it's independently verified by two people that it is the right drug. That's the safest way. So that's really important. And once again, the time to do that is yes, when we're drawing up the drug and preparing it, but also when we actually have it in our hand prior to administering subsequent doses. Get into those habits early in your paramedic career, everything will be fine. You should avoid any big drug errors. It's been Paramedic Project. Thanks for joining us once again. Find us on social media. We'll see you next time.